Uh, I want to welcome uh, Diane Rogers is here from uh, the Amethyst Women's Addiction Center. She's a health promotions facilitator. Hi, Diane. How Hi. are you? Uh, Shelly McKay is also here. You're known as uh, what's called an advocate, but you do most of your work where? At the Royal, um, the Women's Mental Health Foundation. Right, right. On behalf. Amongst, amongst other things. Yes. Right. So we'll call you an advocate. Because, okay. Well, you are. Yes. Um, you've got a symposium on violence against women coming up in, uh, in Vanier on June 12th. Mm -hmm, that's right. Yeah. What's the premise behind the symposium itself? What, uh, what's going on there? Well, the whole concept is to bring women with lived experience to the forum, along with service providers who are providing programs, supports, and services for women, mm -hmm. to have a big conversation about how we can develop and design a screening tool so that every door that a woman might go to, hospital, uh, clinic, uh, addiction center, mental health unit, there'll be a common screening tool whereby women will be recognized as needing other supports around sexual assault, domestic violence, right. violence on the streets. Because the right as reverse. you well know, there are many uh, factors involved here. It's not just simple violence against women, right? There are other outside influences and things that are connected to all of this. That's right, and we're trying to, to point to the fact that usually violence precedes codependence um, on, on substances and mental disorders. Right. So in fact, women who have experienced violence are, are five times more likely to develop a mental disorder or a substance abuse issue. After the fact? After the fact, yes. Or during, as it or were? Or during, yes, yeah. but it's, the, the violence precedes those other two things generally. So, so not only is there probably uh, some, you know, in many cases, uh, the influence of drugs and other factors beforehand and during, but after the fact as well. That's right. That's a big problem. It's a huge, it's very complex. Yeah. Are women willing to talk about this? Like you want to talk to people who have, have had or are having this happen to them, correct? That's right. And they are very willing to talk as long as they're in a safe environment. And we're providing a safe environment uh, on June the 12th right. in Banyer right. for them to speak. How do you encourage people who are affected by this directly to come out and speak? Well, we work through their trusted service providers to have women identified who are willing to talk. Right. And as long as they're reassured of uh, confidentiality and safety at, at the forum, then they're very willing because they want to help themselves and other women. Exactly. And, women. and I think, uh, and I'm sure you've seen this, once somebody steps forward and starts talking about these issues in an, in an open sort of fashion, it leads to others doing the very same thing. That's right. And right? That's, that's part of what drives me to go out and talk about right. it as well. And we're hoping on this day... Um, in a very supporting environment um, with, with also some counselors present who will help those who may feel very emotional in sharing. Right. Um, we'll have a, a full spectrum of people available. It, it certainly opens up uh, the idea of awareness, but does it have any real impact on, on the issue itself when, when we have symposiums like this? Well, we're certainly hoping that once the screening tool is designed for each and every um, agency and organization mm -hmm. that works with women, uh, that that screening tool will open up the greater potential for women to be referred to the right supports and services. So, right. and hopefully it'll draw attention, obviously, to this. It, is that often a problem that we, you know, need to send them in the in the right direction mm -hmm. to the right people, and that uh, that sometimes doesn't happen? Well, absolutely. Number one, the agencies are strapped for funding at the moment, so it's very hard for them to provide the right kind of services all the time for every woman who may come uh, through absolutely. the door. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. and you can't be too general in nature, right? You have to be specific mm -hmm. at certain times, mm -hmm. Absolutely. which is difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Not difficult to become a part of this symposium, though. Mm -hmm. How do people get involved? I know you, you want more and more people to come out and, and, and take part in this. Well, we're asking service providers and women with lived experience to, um, to s register. They can do that through Amethyst uh, Women's Addiction Center. And I believe that the website, amethystottawa.org, is on the, the screen, mm -hmm. as well as call up. And there's a registration with the uh, Ottawa uh, Coalition uh, for Violence Against Women right. as well. Right. Uh, but we are asking that um, people sign up as soon as possible. It's not open to the general public, per se. Right. But we'd like the general public to please feel free to contact Amethyst so that they could talk to us about wanting to be involved and how they'd like to be involved in the dialogue. We got to run, but ladies, thanks for your time, and I, I hope this goes well. It's, uh, it's a very great way to talk about uh, an issue that affects a lot of people that we don't even know about. Right? Women, children, yeah, and fathers. Thanks very much. Thank you very Thank much. You.